Today we're looking at pruning and styling a much older Japanese maple than we have in previous videos. And Craig Wilson from Gentiana Nursery is going to take us through the whole process. The task's a lot larger, however, the process is much the same. When I look at this plant, all I see is potential. At the moment, when you look at it from the good side, it's just a green blob, and so what we'll be doing is opening it up and creating some breaks in the canopy so that you can actually see the structure. And there will be gaps. Um, there will be gaps, and, and it, it's up to the person who's growing the tree to fill those gaps with time. But we'll talk about that as it happens. But yeah, it's going to have a lot of branch removal work. So this is uh, Acer palmatum and it's one of the dissectum forms and, and I hesitate to give a name to it because sometimes they all look the same. This is one in that case, it's a green one. This is a fairly old tree. 40 years. Okay. Or thereabouts. And as we saw it, it it's, was overgrown by other plants. This whole driveway along here was just a wall of foliage. You couldn't see what was behind it, including this. So now it's opened up and it's time to uh, restructure it. That's right. It's, it's well, yeah, prune it. Prune to, it? To, to get out what's superfluous to its shape and to open it up so that you don't get these clusters of um, leaves hanging in where, where you've got the twigs matted. So it's... it's and, and so that when you look at it, you don't just see a tangle of branches, you see some sort of structure. Okay, Yeah. so, and we've got some heavy duty equipment here. We're using yeah. loppers and uh, the little chainsaw. That's right. This is my favourite tool. This is a pocket boy. It, it's really convenient for getting into these shrubs in difficult spots. So I've, I've been over this a couple of times and taken all the dead wood out, um, which is what you should do regardless of whether you're going to do a prune or not. And you can tell the dead wood by its colour. The colour, it's much paler as opposed to a live one. Okay. Yeah. And? Easy picked. So. And it's usually very brittle. Sometimes you can just go under it and rub it with your hands and, and it'll it. come off. So what I'm going to do first is get in here and do some of the obvious. You see, like a branch like this. That's just it, crossing back it's right. It's crossing back right into the tree and it's got no space to develop anything in there, so... And if anyone's concerned about leaving butts and things, you know, I, I will, when we're finished, go over it and tidy everything up. So all of these will be... They'll be tidied up. Yeah. 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 These are all dead wood. One's got some life. All right. Now there's another one up here. You see it's hooked in under there. Yes. Yeah. It's only going to cause problems. And, 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 and on, it's also heading into that tangle. So. <laughs> Can you edit some of these bits out? It's a bit awkward. So sometimes you have to cut these things out. Because that one's really wrapped itself around everything, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. There are some situations here that I'm not going to be able to alter. See, like, see here. And, and here. And, 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 and in all truth, you know, they, they can add to the beauty of the tree. Well... A bit of eccentricity. It, well, it certainly is. Yeah. But, you know, it's better if you get these things done when you buy it and then you know 20 minutes a year when 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 the nurseryman grows these dissectums what they want to do is fill the crown 
and, and they don't care how that's done as long as it's nice and full. And I don't, look, I don't blame them for that. It takes a long time to grow them. Well, that's the thing. I think pe people don't always realise how long it takes uh, to grow a decent sized Japanese maple or a decent sized any sort of tree. Yeah, well, these things particularly, you know, because they're grafted. So you, first of all, you've got to grow the understock and then you graft a little twig onto it and then grow it. So you're probably looking at 10 years. So there's a lot of these. See, there's another branch here heading down in. Now here we have a situation, you see here. There's just too much wood there. Too much wood there, but what am I gonna keep? I reckon I can take that whole piece off because you've got there, and then you've got a branch above it, two branches above it. <laughs> yeah, all right. A little electric chainsaw is a very good tool for an old man. They're just a very good tool, I love them. So that's a reasonably big piece that you've taken out here. I want to open it up. And, and the thing about these palmatums is that if you make a hole in the canopy, it doesn't matter, They're, they'll fill it in. They'll shoot back anywhere. I'm just trying to get it out. And you know, there was a tree in another client's garden uh, 12 months ago we had a really serious storm up here and an enormous acacia fell on this dissectum the dissectum would have been 50 or 60 years old and it just sheared one side off it and it's shot back everywhere it, it will recover so that's something's got to go there yeah but look i'll go back to where i was because it's better to do this thing methodically so that you can look at an area and say okay well I've got all the, the problems sorted out so you see this is is just too much you see you've got a great big branch there my feeling and I think I'm right is that I'll take this one out the, the lower one, one. And the reason for that is that there's branches above it there they're going to fill the hole that it creates and there's another one there and then there's branches below it as well whereas with the one that's on the top you get a big a, hole that's a major thing because it's coming you get a big hole in the canopy right over here yeah, yeah. and in the crown yeah. so this one it is Ah, look, you don't even notice it missing. So we can just drag this one out yeah. through here. Yeah. You don't even notice it missing. And you can see what's been taken off, which is a fair bit. And it's already starting to open things up, though, dramatically. You can see it through here. Yeah. And this is the, the middle of winter that we're doing this. Yeah. So this is the time. So see there's this piece here yeah we'll just get rid of it while the going's good that's just curving over the back and this one will develop and this one will go 
because it's so underneath the canopy, it's completely underneath the canopy. Right, and you've got you've got all the growth. There's plenty of growth above it. Yeah. 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 There you go. Nice. So here, I'm going to take that piece out because it's got this on top of it, and it and it's shading that, which we want to develop a bit. Yeah, both sides. <laughs> Ah, right, there we go. So with this tree, it's been, I've opened up the canopy two years ago in terms of what was sitting around it and on top of it, and I've also fed it heavily. Okay. So it's growing like a proverbial, yeah. It, it's <laughs> it's put, putting on a lot of growth. Yeah, it's in good order. And my recommendation would be that you do that to your trees if you want to heavy prune them, get them in the maximum vigour. And below it, we've got some, there's a thick layer of moss. It would be 20 centimetres. 20 centimetres, and we're growing some epimediums. Yep. F. Steinii. Yep. Below and it. And some um, Becia delta phylla. And they can sort of act as a bit of a ground cover yeah, underneath Yeah, and, and then the beauty of those two plants is that if you want to mulch the tree again, you can just put the whippersnipper over them and mulch on top of them, and they'll come back through it. You see here, we've got another situation. That one's curling back yeah, right through. But where I'm standing, there's a really serious hole. So we'll leave those two. So instead of taking it right out by doing what you've done... I've cut to branches that are growing in the direction that I want. So the, these branches here yeah. are, are filling in. So they'll come in and fill in this gap here that where this thing or a conifer or something was sitting on top of. Yep. Yeah. And again, you know, we're trying to protect the, the branches that are lower down. To open them up so that they don't die back. It's pretty much the same as the other one, but this one just requires some much bigger cuts. You see, we've got three choices here. Um, I think it's going to be this. Oh, sorry, John. Yeah. I think it's going to be this one. It's going to come out. No, that I'm going to keep. You're going to keep? Yeah. Because the other one's going the back. Other, yeah, they're, it's yeah, coming back underneath. That's right. So, so we look at it and we've got this one here. You've got one choice there, and that's another one. And then you've got this other one. And then this one, which is, is just, there's no question. That's right underneath, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's that one, yeah. <laughs> And I'll tidy these up later. Okay. So yeah, now we've got a. That's got room, room to grow, and it's it's going to fill in too. That's right. And and we'll organise it so that it gets a bit more light. So it really is a process of moving around the tree and doing each section so that you are just providing enough room for everything to grow. That's right, and, and to give you some structure and, and perhaps create a layering effect. Yes. Yeah, and if you want the tree to fall right to the ground, then you have to protect those lower branches in terms of giving them light. Yes. Otherwise they're going to die back. They'll just die off. So which, which means around the centre of the tree, coming in harder. For me, I, I quite like to lift them because you know it's an opportunity to grow something underneath them. Okay, so there's one branch here. See, this one. Yep. You see, I think we've got that, we've got that, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that it's going. Getting anywhere? 
Yeah, you are. There we go. So we can see down here, perhaps a, it's a good example of what hasn't been done in the past. With, That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not really what you want, although yeah. it, it can create an interesting look. Yeah. Look, yeah, it, it's entirely dependent on your taste. And, and that, that's something that only you have and you can decide. But for me, I, I like to be able to see them. So well, this branch here, you know, what I'd probably do is get a forked branch. Yep. And just prop it up. So try and encourage that to... Just, just about there. Yep. So, so that it, um, it's not quite so low. But then if you want the tree to fall right to the ground, you could do that. Yep. You could leave it. And that yeah. propping and stuff, you see it so much in Japanese gardens. That's right. They like to manipulate their trees. Well, it's these are manipulated trees anyway. because They're you don't, an aberration. You don't, yeah. you don't see them like this in, the na no. in nature. So we've got one here. We've got this piece here, which clearly we want. But then you've got another piece here that's sort of Mr Curly, curling back on top of it. And then you've got another piece that's heading right into the centre of the tree. So, we'll take that one. There. So you can see it's starting to open up quite nicely. This side's looking so much more open. But, but at the same time, when you see it in the spring and in the summer, it won't. it'll still be full. So here, I, I want that one, I think. And so you see here, it's sitting on top of it. Just here, this, this one. And that one. There we go. Now we've got that one. Just feel where that one's coming from. There and there. That's dead wood. Sit in there. I've been watching that. So you see, we've opened up a, a layer between them to get light into these lower branches. Yes, yeah, so you're going to get better yeah. growth. Yeah. Bit of dead wood in here. So we're hoping here that this bit that's coming out yeah. is going to be the fill-in. It will. Yep. So there's no hope. Yeah, it will because you know that's north. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it gets the sun. So with a bit bit of sun, it's going to going yeah. to grow for us. That's right. In in the crown of the tree, you can be quite robust with your pruning. Yes. Because it's the strongest part of the tree. Because it's getting all. Well, it's at the apex. Yep. That's what, yeah. So, what I want to do is take, there's a big thick piece up the top there. Here. Here. I've got a choice of that one. Or this one. My feeling is to keep the finer one of the two. Yeah. And then this big heavy piece here. This is the, that's not very smart. This is the side of the tree that's always received light. So the growth's a bit stronger. 
Yeah, we've got a bit of a hole in the front of it, haven't we? Yes, but... Uh, It'll fill up. I have no, no problem with that at all. Well, you've got some good growth coming out here. and Oh, yeah, and, and these buds, I mean, the, these buds here, they'll, they'll, by the end of the season, they'll be out, you yep. know, 30, 40 centimetres. We will be back to have a look at it when it's... Yeah, that's uh, right. So, yeah. And, and if it's a failure, then you won't go on YouTube. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> We've got another one heading straight into the middle here. And here. And up here. Now, there is One here, see? Right, that's coming right back through yeah. the centre. So this one, see it's coming around here, and there's a couple of bits come in there. And I'll leave them because I think they have a role to play. But this one... And this one out. What do you reckon about this branch, John? Do we keep it or do we take it off? I think that something has to be done because it's, there's too much going on down here. Yeah. And do we want to branch that low? I mean, you've got here and you've got here, which will both extend. So if you take it off, you're going right back over to the... I'll take it off at the trunk, yeah. Unless you want to branch this down this low... If you wanted your tree to fall right to the ground... Then you... Then you would just tidy it up. You'd probably keep that that piece that I'm holding. Yep. Take that one out like that. And... Mm, yeah, and, and here as well. But if you don't want it to fall right to the ground, you've got if all... If you want of, a garden underneath it... You've got all of this here that's going to grow anyway. Yeah. So you'd... Uh, I'm going to take it out. Probably pick up the chainsaw and take it yeah. right back. Yeah. But it's really because of access to under the tree and, and so that the epimedium and things that I, I've put under there are, um, are going to be seen and get light. <coughs> the undercut just stops the bark from ripping when you take the top off. And with this sort of pruning, the electric chainsaw is a bit easier than the uh, the petrol driven ones because they're lighter and a bit easier to manoeuvre. And as soon as you take your finger off the trigger, the chain stops. See, there's a piece here, see? Yes. Yeah. All right. What do you reckon? It sort of gets to the stage where you think you, you, you need, need to have a rest. You need to have a rest and look at it. Yeah. And there may be a little bit more that needs doing over here, but it's a bit hard to tell. No, look, there probably is, but, but my feeling now is that it's enough for today and we'll let the tree grow for a year and then revisit it. Right, so we'll yeah. be back. We saw it six months ago. We'll have another look in six months. Yeah. And then we'll follow it up in another year as yeah. well. Yeah. So just to show that what you can do with an older maple, it's been overgrown, needs a bit of love. And needs a bit of style. Yeah. I mean, the thing with these maples is that you don't see them growing in the forest. You know, they, they are man-made. Yeah, well, we and can they see... they have a, a really twisted growth habit. Because there's the graft down, down there. Yeah. And uh, nature doesn't graft things. Well, so there we go, brutalised maple. 
So in the springtime, when the tree comes into leaf, just sit back and relax and enjoy watching it grow. And don't think about removing anything because by allowing it to grow, you're letting the plant gather strength. And then in early summer, the, um, is, is the time to revisit it. And really it's just a matter of going over the inside of the tree and rubbing out the buds, which are superfluous if they're heading into the tree or if they're in a place where you don't need more branching you can just rub them out with your fingers and it's much better to do that earlier rather than later because later you're going to need secateurs and, and by taking them out with your fingers what you do is is you also take out the buds around the base of the branch so that it, there's a possibility it won't reshoot again from that spot whereas if you lose secateurs you always leave a stub and it's going to continually reshoot. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of garden matters. And as always, good luck with your gardening.